Hey buddies, let's try to make a kukri today. This World War II tank tread or track pin was purchased off of eBay. It's the only piece of steel from a tank I could get my hands on. Trust me, I looked for a barrel and I cannot afford one. So it doesn't spark like high carbon steel, but some alloys don't. So to get a good grip on that, we're going to harden it in water and even in oil to see where we get. After quenching in both, it really never gets above 50 HRC. So I'm going to pack it and put it in the oven to see if we can add enough carbon through carburization to get it hard after a quench. I've carburized stuff quite a bit on this channel. I'll leave a link in the description to some other videos about that process if you guys are curious. And this one sparks pretty good. I think there's some more flowering or bursting there. So when we quench it in water, we'll see that it also skates a file now. So we had some success in adding enough carbon to get it more hardenable and making a hardenable steel or using a hardenable steel is step one to getting a good knife. So it's into the forge where we'll hammer out the tip first and then the blade. I gotta tell you up front, there's several things that went pretty well with this project and I'm happy with and multiple mistakes and learning points. I'll try to point them out as we go. Some of them will be pretty obvious. quickly apparent that flattening this on my own will take several hours at least and lots of wear and tear on my joints, so Lewis volunteers to help the process along with a sledgehammer. Ultimately here I'm worried about whether or not there'll be enough steel to make a wide enough blade, a kukri style blade, while maintaining enough weight and thickness at the spine. After all, we're making a kukri, not a, a machete, a thinner blade. So remember, even after forging, some material will be further removed with profiling and grinding the bevels. I uh, just have to be very conscious of how we spread this metal and how thin it gets. We'll use a cross bean hammer to try and squish the material outward um, instead of lengthening the blade. straightened everything out as best I can on the forge and I'm orienting the tip in a, in a direction that I like. It's still not wide enough however, especially distally, so I'm going to have to draw it out a little more with the cross beam. As you can see I've drawn out on the anvil with chalk a visual representation of sort of where I'm headed or trying to head. I think it gives me a good reminder uh, with the actual piece of steel and the drawing in front of me of, of what I need to be doing.
here I'm putting the bend in the back of the blade but as you can see it's in the wrong spot it really should be further down towards the handle the result here I think is some negative style points for the final shape in my opinion and we end up biting into the recurve portion of the edge as well creating this little step off or notch which didn't really hammer out like I thought it would I've decided at this point to keep that step off or that little half rounding notch because it looks sort of cool and I'm, you know maybe stylistically it's a little different than a lot of kukris um, but it really I've not put the proper recurve in and essentially later on I'll change my mind about that. this thickness the steel moves fairly easily and it hammers well cold without any cracks. It makes me wonder if it's something similar to 1040 or a mildly alloyed version of that steel that we put a few tenths of uh, carbon into. Pure conjecture, I could be way off. If anyone happens to know what this is likely to be, speak up in the comments section. It'd be really interesting for the rest of us to hear that. After the tang is hammered out, we'll go to the grinder for some profiling. The notch is staying for now, but it's going to meet with some more scrutiny later, as I alluded to. I'd like to leave the tang as wide as possible for strength purposes. I don't usually do hidden tangs for choppers, although the modern style for the kukri does allow for a, for a hidden tang or a, a rat tail tang. As you can see, um, after the grinding here, I've taken quite a bit of care to keep the blade straight and it has been ground down to about a millimeter or so thickness to facilitate complete uptake of the carbon into the edge. And so we can get full thickness hardening there. Our carburization powder is constituted from roughly 30 to 40% sodium carbonate, or, uh, which is baking soda essentially heated in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes to 250 degrees. And the rest is charcoal powder. The kukri is too big to fit into a steel container and then into the oven, so I sealed it uh, essentially in steel foil, which I double bagged. I tried to get it airtight, and I think, I think it was airtight enough. Now it's back into the oven for some thermal cycling prior to heat treatment, but at the last minute I decided that notch has got to go and I'm gonna grind it away. First I'll take some chalk and make sure I understand what exactly that's gonna look like. We're definitely gonna end up with more of a traditional recurve portion there. There's some risk in doing this. If that area that I ground away was too thick, it's not gonna be carburized all the way through and that part of the blade will not be hardenable. It turns out that it, it was hardenable and I didn't grind away too much of the carbon containing steel. After tempering and making a protracted effort to straighten out warping, which we took on during the quench, we'll start the final grinding process. Here the tang is being prepared for fitting a guard to and the guard is ultimately filed to the proper width and it'll be pressed on there. Now 
Machinist, you will want to avert thine eyes. I have no lathe or any real machining equipment or mills, so this pommel pin is made with more rudimentary techniques. I'm going to start shaping the handle now, but I've not taken enough care in drilling out the handle for our extra wide tang. So while trying to sand the handle to an ergonomically desirable shape, I actually expose the tang hole. A super huge bummer. So this handle is scrapped and ultimately I'm going to narrow the tang a little bit further on the grinder. A new handle is started, taking much more care to make the tang hole as small as possible along the sides. I'm going to use this drill press and uh, really map out where this thing is going to go. This looks much better to me, ultimately, and it's a very good lesson here for me and everyone else. Lots of pain starting over on these handles. After shaping the handle, I decided at the last minute to try something I've wanted to for a while now, multiple layer offset woods. So this is mesquite on top of tambodi on the bottom, separated by a black vulcanized paper liner. I did film more of that process, but this video is already so long and I think it's a little bit self-explanatory what I did there. Maybe I'll include that in a future video. After filing a very simple pattern into the nickel silver pommel piece I've drilled and shaped, it's time to glue things up. This is always a bit of a mess and I make uh, the epic mistake of using 5 minute epoxy for this. It always burns me. It really puts me in a rush and even though everything is dry fit prior to gluing, if there's a problem during the actual gluing, I really have not much chance to fix it and you really cannot clean this epoxy out of all the nooks and crannies uh, through tang handles so uh, you know 15 20 minute epoxy is is pretty much the rule here uh, as you can see the pommel nut is straight but the butt of the handle wasn't perfectly flat the pommel nut may be off just a hair I didn't see this in dry fit and even though I noticed it a little bit while using the epoxy there just wasn't enough time to fix it at that point. So I'm going to have to do some creative sanding here uh, carefully around the pin and maybe even adjust the angle of the pin itself. You saw me filing a traditional Cho notch in, into the blade with a diamond file. It's a bit small. It should have been cut in before heat treatment to avoid scorching the metal after tempering it and cutting it in later. So I'm really essentially stuck using this tiny little diamond file that I have trying to make that notch. And you know, it's okay. The notch serves little functional purpose to most users. So I'm trying something new here as well. I've carved out some bits of the handle and a pattern and filled them with colored epoxy to make this pattern. I think it's a win. You know, I've never really tried this before and I think it turned out well. I have to admit the pattern probably could be a little more complex and look better. Uh, but as far as a new technique for me, you know, hey, baby steps. It 
It chops like a champ. I'm pretty impressed. The pommel swell also feels great. Uh, it looked uh, sort of prominent to me, but actually it's just the right size since the rest of the handle is fairly thin. Um, Listen, even though we got this to around 58 to 60 HRC, according to my hardness files, the edge retention is very average. But in a chopper, I think it, it'll probably do fine ultimately, but I can't say that I'm all that impressed with it. It just goes to show you there's more to making a good knife than having enough carbon to harden the steel. I've said this before, with, we, you end up wondering about grain size and carbides and other factors that affect abrasion resistance that you really can't account for with mystery steel. The base of the blade is about a quarter inch thick and it narrows down to 3 16 towards the tip. I didn't profile the spine on the grinder at all. I left it sort of this forge finish and I left marks along the side. Those could have been ground out, but I wanted to keep again as much metal as possible uh, and maintain the weight of the blade so it would be a good chopper. So essentially we're left with a, a rough finish, but hey, I think it looks all right. I'm not entirely happy with the epoxy pattern on the handle. I still think um, the handle looks great. However, I learned some things the hard way with this build and I picked up some new tricks. The Tembodi is gorgeous. I've never used it before. What do you guys think? What went right here? What went wrong? What would you change? Let me know below and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoy these videos, consider heading on over to Patreon and supporting me there. For only $2 a month, you can have access to exclusive videos. There's lots of cool things going on there, so go check it out.